Hello again, folks, and welcome back to Let's Play It Cocoon. I'm your host, Game of Darius. I haven't ground yet. I just feel like I need to share this uh, thing that suddenly popped into my head before I do said grinding, and then I'm going to do that and go to the actual video. So, there is something I like to call the Ghibli Twist. Basically, it's some sort of addition to the story that, in the context of the world, makes sense. But you as a viewer are given no prior information or knowledge about this being a thing. Garai being the incarnation of uh, Ashura being the case in this place. Like, we had no information about Ashura up to this point. But it exists in the world, so it makes sense. Usually it's when the movie, or, or Ghibli movie to be precise, starts to accelerate in plot and ex escalate and all the cards are put on the table and it, it's kind of similar to being Shyamalan uh, but unlike the Ghibli twist being Shyamalan makes no sense at all and usually has a lot of plot holes involved especially when you consider that a Shyamalan film usually takes place with a whole lot of realism uh, the, the Village being a prime example of this uh, spoilers for The Village so close your everything for like five seconds uh the village is, takes place in modern days and the medicine can be obtained from a pharmacy so that said it makes no sense that the village even should exist or i mean to exist sure to have you know no prior knowledge of whatever point is it's it's the Shyamalan twist oh you're you're expecting this one thing that. You know, you're in this verse, but really, you're in this verse. Kind of a thing. Whereas Ghibli, it makes sense in the context of the world. But, you are not privy to the knowledge necessarily. So, like, um, uh, Spirited Away, Haku being the incarnation of a river. Uh, the filth demon actually not being a filth demon. Stuff like that. Now that said... Plain Jade Cocoon here. I got Ghibli twisted so hard my head near popped off. That's all I have to say. I remember how I said I was going to be grinding? Yeah, that's, apparently that was a lie. Because it turns out that the spider forest is now filled with instant death spiders. Not even kidding. And, um... They pretty much instantly kill you. And there's uh, no point at, that I can currently call that will allow you to purify your fireflies and get your cocoons back all that fun stuff but you can't level up your capture level so we're gonna continue the story and hope that we don't die along the process and uh, to make this just a smidgen easier on myself I do have a map just a smidgen easier Oh good, at least this place isn't hell on earth. Yet. Oh, alright. Just off camera, that's fine. What are you besides an abomination? Kind of looks like a shrimp. That looks very much like a shrimp. I'm going to murder it. Out nearly did. Oh, okay. Part shrimp, part flea. Or a uh, pistol shrimp, to be part particular. I don't know, there's something about the buggy eyes that made me go pistol shrimp. Yeah, so, so surprisingly, that wasn't really easy considering the last place is filled with death. Okay, you're a big. There's a chest in there. I think I want to go this way, though. You know, this place is surprisingly peaceful. I would show off the spider things and whatnot, but I got a feeling that that place is going to be... Uh... 
quite a giant pain in the ass to deal with, even if I did... Or even if I am... Um, I don't want to just have to load, is pretty much what I'm saying. I'm gonna attack you. Oh no, you are also a high physical attacker, aren't you? Oldie? Will that work on you? Balls. See, it's all good with these guys actually being able to take out and level up on these characters and whatnot. Problem wise for me is that because I can't capture anything because I literally have one cocoon left, uh, I can't really do much about it. I just gotta kinda hope. Hope that I get through here or hope that I find supplies. Well, at least the leveling up is nice. You know, until someone gets killed. Shishi Udo oil, but oh, the, all that stat increasing stuff. I guess, I guess it's not bad, it's just, you know. Not what I need right now. Tits! Try Leviathan on you. The shit goes swimmingly. Oh, uh, fuck. Alright, that's not... That's not too shabby. At least it's a lot more damage than, um... Other dude was doing. That and being able to level up all your creatures is probably a good idea. Ooh, yeah, he's about to level up again. Alright. Also, I just want to point out this, uh, the map I'm using is the one from the Prima Guard Goid. And it's a little bit hard to read. Simply because there's a lot of camera angle switching when it comes to this game. I'm kind of presuming I have to go this way first. Ah, there he is. You lost, sir. Well, another sucker right where I want him. <laughs> Hey there, kid. Give me all your white cocoons. Hand them over now and I won't kill you. Oh, you want to do it the hard way, huh? You'll regret it. Now I just hope that I actually have a monster to deal with this guy. I'm going to stop him first. Just so he gets the idea. I'm here to kill you. The goat. Hmm. I really don't have an element against Earth. So let's go with Terrago. Terragon against the goat. Maybe I can poison him. Yep. Let's pirouette on over to me. I don't think that poisoned him. At the least that did next to no damage, so... That's better. What about level this guy's supposed to be? Probably can't sleep him either. It'd be really nice. Being able to, uh, being able to level up my capture level so I can get some more new monsters. Hey, he's doing the things.
All right, time to switch. Mm, Leviathan would be a bad idea in case he... Both these other two are bad ideas in case he decides to use an earth attack. So let's just use a Shablikur. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize how little the Shablikur actually works now. Uh, so the flesh instantly causes excruciating pain. Sex against all the status elements. You know what? A little bit of wind, why not? Hi. Nope, oh, you didn't like that. Alright. Actually, him I can just summon up for a Leviathan, I think. I don't want any of my monsters dying because I have no clue where and how the hell I'm going to be able to resurrect anyone. Didn't mean to defend, but alright, fine. Yep, get back that whole, like, six mana. Also, I'm realizing now I'm not going to get experience for the Gigo. Well, that kind of sucks. I say that because I and I was the one that ended up killing the Gigo, not one of my creatures. Leviathan, would you please stop missing? Life or death battle here, Bayan. You know, I actually don't know what a game over in this game would look like. I'd rather not figure out what a game over in this game looked like. All I know is that, um... I don't know how hard slash easy it is to bring your monsters back to life after they've been slain. Hey, More level ups. Cool. I can't believe I just lost a little kid. I guess I'm over the hill. Three times, actually. Maybe I should just retire. See you around, kid. Aw. Almost feel bad for the guy if he wasn't trying to kill me. The so Terragon got back a little bit of health. I'm gonna go... Go ahead and use a shabby cooler on him. Just in cases. Cool. Actually, really quick, how many more skeleton keys do I have? I know I didn't find everything in the spider forest. And that's one of the reasons why I'm wondering. How many I have in the first place? I could have just used the Great Walnut. But yeah, it's one of the reasons why I hadn't, because I realized I hadn't explored everything there. And part of that was because I was really kind of wanting to get to the next beat of the story, not realizing that the next beat of the story is uh, hell. Hell on Earth. Alright. Now that we're out here... Ooh. Is that a fire one of those? A piran. Now more than ever do I feel like I need to level up my character simply because... Okay, I think he's got some sort of a poison attack. Come on. Come on, Leviathan. There you go. 
Oh, special liquor. Cool. So at the least, I am getting some stuff in order to heal my monsters around here. I walked right into his loving arms. Look at those arms. Those arms are made for hugging. Alright. So water, eh? I ain't got any earth attacks. Ooh, good crit. Didn't get hit in the face. You know, the more and more that I look at Terragon, the more and more I really want him to turn into a full-fledged stag beetle or something. I don't know. I like beetles. Of the entire insect world, stag beetles and beetles in general are just awesome. Yeah, might as well attack this guy. Ratodon. Hmm. Actually, I have Iathan this time. See how you fear, seeing as you actually have an earth attack. Ooh. Yeah, that's just how effective that shit is in, the, uh, in this game. I am definitely going to, if slash when, I actually get some sort of access to leveling, uh, to healing my characters, I really, really gotta do the thing. Let's see. Let's say it's out this way. Do the right. Yep. And through here. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's an air guy. Fine. So I got Pata for that. Oh, this guy is actually pretty fast. That's annoying. Punch him. I think he's out of magic. Dang it. Shut up, phone. Ooh. Pretty close to a level. I mean, we can do a little bit of exploration in, I guess. Pata, buddy. Because we have fire. Fire's not going to be super effective against that other guy, but the water is. Or not. Or maybe it's completely and totally ineffectual. Oh, wait, that's right. Pata's. Pata's intelligence sucks. So let's focus down on this guy. Or not. Or miss. Missing works. How the hell do you do that much damage? Pata, buddy, are you in trouble? One down. Oh, don't. Damn it! This Nagi village better have a freaking area where I can, like, heal people or something. Or just do... Go going back to the actual thing of the game, you know? 
Because nothing sucks more than having your monster suddenly die and... Oh, hey. How slash where am I supposed to heal it? This minion having a second churn is what killed it. I was going to pull him back and heal Pata. Leviathan, please. Hit. Hit. Leviathan's accuracy is not very good. Well, at least Leviathan leveled up. That's a plus. Alright, you know what? I was going to say, oh, I should explore around here some more. Uh, not if Pata's going to be dead. I'm, I'm beelining to the next story beat in the vain hopes that maybe, just maybe, my minions can get healed. <laughs> Help! My monsters are dying and the other forests are filled with instant death insects. I better save. I'm gonna save in the second slot. Just in case. It's paranoia. I don't know what would happen if I don't, but anyways. Hear me? This earthy smell. It seems so familiar. Though I know I've never been here myself. This must be a memory from a past life. Well, let's open the gate. Hold my cocoon up high before the gate. I think that should work. Well, Give it a try. Nagi people. I feel the presence of the chieftain from the middle hall. Let's go. At last, the time has come, the time of gathering. 
I shall open the door, for I am the incarnation of Mephises, gatekeeper of time. You may call me Ni. When the four divine barriers have been opened, the power of light and darkness shall usher in the time of gathering. The guardian deities of light and darkness shall be guided by the twin dragons of Kemuel, and the Kumarian Kaya gates shall open. When the chosen ones pass through these gates and meet at last, the beasts of divine power shall be freed from their curse and achieve tranquility. And the beasts of knowledge shall gain the fruits of new knowledge. But it is the fruit that bears the seeds of admonition. We chose a midwife to be the incarnation of the divine spirit Azura. And we sent her to Cyrus to confirm the rebirth of the chosen one. The midwife I speak of is Garai. The prophet Gi spoke. Craft a ring from the tears of Rhys and place it on the baby who arrives. The ring shall begin to glow when the Chosen One is born. We have been waiting for that time. Our souls have already experienced two ordeals. Lust was the first, the forbidden love of the Divine Spirit and the Beast of Knowledge. And then, the birth of the twins who possess divine power. You must save Mabu by gathering all four jewels and defeating the Chosen One of Darkness. The one who was chosen... Oh no. Oh, come on. Greed was the second ordeal. It began with the love between Alcana the beast of divine power, and Menik, the beast of knowledge. Okay, I think this is where we were. The love between Alcana and Menik gave birth to the doubt of the masses. Divine silk was used in an attempt to conquer doubt and save love. But it did not work. King Karras, the chosen one of darkness, was dominated by greed. Light was torn from greed and became misery, and so was born the beast in our hearts. The minions of the forest, the beasts in our hearts. This is the second seed of admonishment. Once again, the time is here. Destiny awaits. All our hopes lie with the child who was born that day. We name the child the Ray of Hope. Of course, it is Mabu of whom I speak. The birth of Mabu signifies the reincarnation of Menik and Karis, the light and the darkness. As foretold by the prophecy, I sent Garai out on her journey with Mabu. You indeed are the Chosen One of Light, who was led here by the Ray of Hope. Your power is needed to provide physical vessels to the spirits that wander through space and time. The Chosen One of Darkness has already passed through the Kaya Gate. Now he awaits you. You must pass through the Kamari Gate to reach him. You shall use the keys of the four divine barriers to summon the crystal for your first ordeal.
Before you can encounter the Chosen One of Darkness, you must undergo the ordeal of the Four Jewels. The first ordeal was Solidar. For this, you obtain the Jewel of Water. The remaining three ordeals are Fire, Air, and Earth. These ordeals lie in the forest far away, beyond space and time. Now, the second ordeal begins. You must venture to the Beetle Forest of the Nether. What? Is something wrong? Ah, you are worried about Marble. Her metamorphosis is almost complete. No longer can she leave the cocoon. You must save Mabu by gathering all four jewels and defeating the Chosen One of Darkness. O oh, Chosen One of Light, you must make haste. Consult with me to clear your uncertainties. I give you two Nagi maidens to help you prepare for your journeys. I am Ra. As a Nagi maiden, I shall serve the Chosen One of Light. Come to the Chamber of Purity if you ever require purification. Go through the blue entrance on the left. My name is Mu. Come to the Chamber of Goods to replenish your supplies. Go through the green entrance on the right. Make good use of their services. You can purify and merge minions as well as buy weapons and supplies. Oh, thank God. Now you must pass through the Kumari Gate and set out on your ordeal. That was a lot of information, and I've retained none of it. I just want to make that clear. There's, is there a save point that I can head up first? Oh, there, well, there is one there, but I want to... Green. Hi. I am Ra. As a Nogi maiden, I shall serve the Chosen One of Light. I hope my Nagi magic will be of service to you. Purify. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I can't help but feel like that there was a whole lot of escalation going on these last couple of episodes and it was definitely a lot more than I was expecting or ready for for that matter holy shit like we we simply went from a dude trying to go into a forest to get a herb in order to save you know the people within said forest to so you got to face off against the the warrior of darkness now. Okay. Let me. Yep. Nagi magic. Thank you. Let me check out the equipment. Kind of funky though that they made it so they kind of taken all of the different areas, all the different characters you could talk to, and now it's boiled down to these three. serves the Chosen One of Light. Please tell me if you need anything for your journey. 
Something tells me that she was supposed to have a far more, like, how to say, ch <laughs> what? What is, what? What? <laughs> eight, 80, 80,000 80, yen. Samurai, of course, is a freaking katana. Large curved blade distinctly forged with spectacular blossom patterns. I mean, that sounds awesome, but oh, frick! Okay. Woven of the highest quality white silk cocoon, the breath of the forest is woven in. Navy blue garb. Nagi garb. Hey, how can you tell that you're in the end game? Look at the prices. Magic attack increase. Actually, that'd be pretty nice. Well, if my character could you actually use magic. Mm. Speed up would be good. Made of sparrow feathers. Bo boosts. Boosts. Boosts the heart and mind. I mean, looks like it boosts my speed. Holy rough, which is your defense. I'm gonna go with a sparrow, sparrow rough. I have readied it. Do I have anything I can actually? I mean, I could get rid of the divine vest. Yes, because I need to buy some actual items. Oh. Feels good being able to actually, you know, get equipment. Any of this? Adjust the viscera total... Wait. Adjust the viscera... Is this the resurrection item? Tendai U Uyaku? I'm gonna guess it is. Ring of Death. Alright. <clears throat> Changes area property have an advantage of Earth. Area property. Oh, and you also sell the seals, too. Ooh, boy. Yeah, I was not ready for this level of escalation. So, you're heading for the beetle forest of the Netherworld, aren't you? Oh no, never mind. Oh no, I, I'm gonna grind for like five hours first before I even think about going into a new area. Just... Just no. That seems like a foolish idea. I hope... Can I go back to the new... To the old areas? Because... I mean... I won't lie. I kinda wanna run back and get the... Get one of those spiders. So I can show you guys, if anything. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and call an episode. Hopefully the game won't bugger out on me again. PlayStation 2, please last at least until the end of this Let's Play. <sighs> when we return, I will have ground, I think, excessively. Particularly for money. Because, um, samurai swords, of course, and equipment. And uh, possibly new forms to be had for my monsters. So thank you everyone so very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying playing it. As always, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care. Cheers.